It may look like a ride, but you don't want a roller coaster to end like this. It's called the convincer, and it's making its way across high schools in Middle Tennessee. This is when teens are getting their driver's license. This is when they're getting their learner's permit. This is when they're going to start forming those habits of making good decisions or making bad decisions when it comes behind the wheel. Amanda Brown with the governor's highway safety office helped show how it works. You would leave your feet flat on the bottom and your hands on your lap and just relax. You see how much my body moves even with the seat belt. So if I didn't have the seat belt on, I would be plastered, you know, uh, on the partition. More than half of people who die in crashes in Tennessee are not wearing their seat belts. With less than 90% of people routinely wearing them here, Tennessee is considered a low use state, and these folks want that to change. Your chances are of surviving a crash if you have your seat belt on are about seven times greater if you're wearing it than if you're not. An important lesson I had to try for myself. The seatbelt convincer only goes five to seven miles an hour. But the jolt really just describes exactly how much damage even a small crash like that could do. Even at a slow pace, even close to home, even on roads that you've been driving on your entire life, it matters. It's an idea they hope to slam into the minds of young people to possibly save their lives. Wow. The seatbelt convincer for Middle Tennessee is housed at the Rutherford County Sheriff's Department. If your organization wants to use it at an event, you just need to contact the Governor's Highway Safety Office. They do recommend that riders be at least 14 years old. Hopefully it'll do the trick. Backseat dangers in the headlines because of a number of high profile crashes, including the famed mathematician John Nash. Too many people not buckling up in the back seat. Many states don't require it. ABC's Gio Benitez has the story. It could happen at any moment. Riding in the back seat of a taxi or car service when suddenly. Disaster. Many of us have been there choosing not to wear seat belts. Oh my God. Like this family, battered, but luckily not seriously injured. Watch again. This is how dangerous that decision can be. Father and son flying in the blink of an eye. Oh my God. 22 states don't require adult passengers in the back seat to wear a seat belt. In fact, a 2014 survey finds that in the bustling streets of New York City, 62% of taxi riders don't buckle up. People just have a mindset that when they get into the back of a cab that they're somehow safer and that's absolutely not true. You're just as vulnerable. This morning, renewed fears after John Nash, the mathematician who inspired the film A Beautiful Mind, died Saturday along with his wife in the back of a taxi on the New Jersey Turnpike. Neither were wearing seat belts. In fact, about half of all traffic deaths involve people not wearing seat belts. And you can just see the difference a seatbelt can make. The unbuckled woman on the left tossed like a stone in a tin can, slamming her head hard. The buckled woman on the right clearly in pain, but her seatbelt preventing a more serious injury. This morning, car service industry experts tell ABC News it's the transportation service's responsibility to have a properly inspected vehicle with working seatbelts, but it is ultimately the passenger's responsibility to wear the seatbelt. While you may hate buckling up for quick trips, they may just save your life. For Good Morning America, Chio Benitez, ABC News, New York. If that doesn't convince you yeah. to buckle up, I don't know what we're all talking about. It. We all do it now. Mm -hmm. yep. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Parents and their toddler riding in the backseat of a cab without seat belts. 
are tossed like rag dolls when the car crashes. Dashcam videos posted on YouTube show other terrifying accidents around the country. Nowhere are the dangers of riding without a seatbelt in the back seat clearer than in this video, which shows one passenger buckled up while the other is not. The woman without a seatbelt is smashed against the side of the car. Her friend is held safely in place. Now the deaths last weekend of math genius John Nash Jr. and his wife Alicia, whose lives inspired the Oscar-winning movie A Beautiful Mind, are reminding everyone about the need to use seatbelts in the back seat. 60 Minutes correspondent Bob Simon was also killed when he wasn't wearing a seatbelt in a town car that crashed in February. The most famous victim of all is, of course, Princess Diana, who wasn't using her seatbelt in the back of her chauffeured sedan when she was killed in 1997. And actor Tracy Morgan suffered grievous injuries when he wasn't buckled into his limo van when it was struck by a Walmart truck last summer. 57% of taxi passengers failed to buckle up. We didn't even think about it. We just hopped in and took off. I spoke to taxi passengers today in New York City. Do you normally, when you get in the cab, put your seatbelt on? Do I normally? Yeah. No. Even a simple fender bender can cause serious facial injuries to passengers who slam into the partition. Doctors even have a name for it, partition face. A broken nose. Plastic surgeon Dr. John Sherman of New York Presbyterian Hospital showed us these scans of patients who suffered serious blows to the head in taxi accidents. Broken noses are the most common, and it goes from the entire spectrum to complex injuries of the mid-face, the eye socket, the upper jaw. Michael O'Laughlin of Cab Riders United. Why do you think people don't wear seatbelts in cabs? Because they have this crazy illusion that somehow because we're paying for the transportation, it's going to be safe. Experts hope that the deaths of the couple who inspired a beautiful mind will remind everyone yet again what's at risk when they neglect to buckle up. Like most victims, Julie knew her killer. It was her son, who wasn't wearing his seatbelt. After crushing her to death, he sat back down. Think, always wear a seatbelt. Chuck Deacons here, FAC Incorporated. I want to talk to you guys today about a, a term that's pretty popular out on the West Coast. It's called tactical seatbelt. And I want to uh, kind of talk about what that means to me. Basically, I, I see there's two components of the tactical seatbelt. One is how you don the seatbelt and take it off. And the other one is when we take the seatbelt off and when we put the seatbelt on. So come with me over to the simulator and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So a lot of guys are concerned about putting the seatbelt on when they're in a hurry. They go to jump in their car, they go into a hot call, back up another officer or, 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 or a crisis situation. Well, think of it like you would when you draw your weapon. You don't think about releasing the snap because you've practiced enough times where it's a natural response. Seatbelt should be the same way. So here I am, I jump in my car, the key's in it, I fire the car, I grab the seatbelt, I don the seatbelt, I put it in the drive, I hit the lights, and here I go, I'm down the road. And as you can see, that doesn't take a lot of time, but it does take practice. Basically, there's two ways that we teach to remove the seatbelt, tactically remove the seatbelt. Uh, the first one is what we call the claw, and what that means is that you grab your seatbelt and you claw it with your hand, the forefinger and the thumb, and you slide down the seatbelt, eyes down, range down road, uh, high visual horizon, slide down the seatbelt and use these three fingers to hit the release. Once you've hit the release, you, you, you grasp it forward like this, just like when we we're putting it on, out away from the body, clear all the gear, and then you slip your hand inside, blade, and the seatbelt comes off your shoulder and clears. So that's, that's one way that we can that we remove the, the seatbelt. That's called the claw. The second way that we remove the seatbelt is what we call the Napoleon. Uh, it's, it's my personal preference uh, because it just, it's a little bit easier for me to find when I'm in the situation. So what I'll do is as I'm, as I'm coming into a scene or coming into a situation, I'll reach under and, and hit the seatbelt here. 
I'll slide down. This time I'm going to use my forefinger and my thumb to remove and release the, the, uh, the hasp. So now I have the hasp in hand. I can put it back if I needed to, back into position, take it back out uh, such as that. I bring it back out here. My hand's already on the inside of the seat belt. I blade and it's off of my uh, body. It clears my lapel mic, clears my patches, clears my weapons, uh, things like that. And now I can exit the vehicle and go from there. So two different ways, the claw and then the polium. Okay, we talked about uh, donning the seatbelt under a, a stressful situation or a hurried situation where we're trying to get to a call and a, a, of a, a back of another officer or a hot call or something like that. Um, and what I want to talk about is when we're doing this, we want to do it in sequential order. Just like we draw our weapon, we present it, presentation skills. The same thing with our driving and our tactical seatbelt. As you're coming up to a scene, there's things going through your head. First of all, you've got to make it to the scene. So we've got to get through the intersections properly. We've got to use uh, proper driving skills for that. Second thing is, is we want to eliminate some of the things that we need to do before we get to the intersection, such as your radio and your, and your lights and your setup and things like that. So as soon as you get close, use the radio. 33 on uh, 97 on scene. So it's done, it's out of the way. Number two is I can see the officer reach in, get that seatbelt out of there. Number three is set up my lights. What am I going to use for lights? Get rid of the siren. I just set up my vehicle position, put it into gear, and now I'm ready to get out of the car. And I have nothing else. I'm not trapped in the vehicle or locked into the vehicle, still trying to find my seatbelt, trying to find my park position. So again, this is the win of, of tactical seatbelt. Sequentially, before you get to the scene, start getting it removed. Radio, seatbelt, lights, vehicle position. Tactical seatbelt. In October 20, 2008, my 15-year-old son, Ryan Thomas, was at a Young Life Christian meeting and he made a mistake and got into a car with a new driver who had a provisional driver's license. And as young drivers do, he drove fast on a country road, lost control of his car, hit a tree, and my son and the other backseat passengers weren't wearing their seatbelts. Now, my son was a car seat baby. He's always wore a seatbelt. But on this particular night, for some unknown reason, none of the kids in the back seat buckled up. And as a result, my son lost his life. One other team was critically injured, and everybody in the car was traumatized. Um, as such, we recognized that officers needed a tool to be able to help do enforcement. We, police officers can't tell how old somebody is in the back seat of the car. So we needed to make what's called mom's law, Maryland law. Moms always tell kids, wear your seat belts. And as we always have done that as well. But we need to make it so that nobody has to say the law. The law is clear. Everybody riding in a car must wear their seat belts. And only the number of people that you have seat belts in the car can operate down the road legally. Brett Wagner, just 18 years old when he died Christmas Day at this intersection, ejected from a car when friends say another vehicle ran a stop sign. Around lunchtime, the group of friends learned Brett's best friend and the one driving the car that night in the hospital for days had just died too. Click in your seatbelt. If you would have put the seatbelt on. I got a real good feeling we'd be talking to them. Probably be talking to both of them. They'd be here if they had those seat belts on, and that is a very, very hard pill to swallow. Just by looking at the truck um, itself, you know, the three boys were in there, one was wearing their seat belt. Just by looking at the truck, the one that was wearing his seat belt, Taryn, it looks like he would not be here with us because of the way the truck looks. I mean, Josh was driving, his, his whole area is perfect. The back seat, perfect. The passenger seat, I mean, it, just by looking at it, you wouldn't think they'd be here today. So, I believe if they would have been wearing their seat belts, they'd still be here. Uh, they'd have bumps and bruises, maybe some broken bones, but they'd be here. I had uh, a gas in my hand that it only required like four or five stitches and a bunch of road rash and bumps on my head. It, what I had was minor. Something that people can think about when they get into their vehicles 
and maybe don't want to put their seatbelt on because whether they don't care or they don't think they're going to drive bad. So many people have reached out to myself, Jerome, Miss Debbie, Fred, and they all seem to say the same thing. You'll have your good days and you'll have your bad days. I disagree. We have bad days and we have worse days. None of them are good. All of them are bad. And I know if Josh could go back and put his seatbelt on, he would do it for me. But it's amazing. One thing can change your life for the rest of your life and my life will never be the same. I'll never be the same person again. I'll never be whole. I mean, I will never be the same person I once was. The happiness that I had, the real true happiness that I had, I never knew I had. You complain about all these stupid little things in your life that make you unhappy. You don't know what that is until you lose it your child. I mean, then what's truly awful about it is that you had it all the time. And you're never going to get it back again because he's never going to walk in this house again. Take the two seconds to put it on. You know, buckle up. I was young. I used to hate my seatbelt. Put it on. It saved me. There comes a point in time in your life where you have to get past this what's hip and what's cool phase and realize what's safe and what's smart. And the sooner you do that, the sooner you could save your own life. We can't control other people's driving. We can control what we do when we get into our vehicle to protect ourselves. That's all we can control. Click your seatbelt. Really click your seatbelt. It only takes a second to do that. And that probably those in those seconds that it takes to do that will save your life.